Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome again to the new lecture of this course properties of materials. Uh, so let me just uh, briefly recap what we discussed in the last class. So in the last class we essentially introduced what stress is, what strain is and basically <laughs> you can say that <laughs> so stress we defined in, in the beginning as average stress and average strain. So, average values of both of them, but then uh, later we introduced the concepts of uh, tensors and, uh, and this is because the stress and strain both are vectorial quantities as a result they have different components in different directions. So, although for example, stress is made of force and area, force and area both being scalar quantities, the magnitude of forces. Uh, magnitude of force and area of force along different directions are different as a result the stresses are different in different directions. So, while sigma x x could be f x by a x, sigma y y is f y by a y, the magnitude, uh, so these are all principal stresses sigma x x and sigma y y, normal stresses we can say them. So, these normal stresses are different to each other because the f x and f y magnitudes can be different as well as a x and a y magnitudes can be different. So, although these two are scalar quantities sigma itself is a is not a scalar quantity. This is what we introduced in the last uh, thing uh, last lecture and we also said that sigma can be represented as sigma i j stress strain can be represented by <coughs> scalar i j and these two are related with respect to each other by a quantity called as i j k l e i j k l and where this E is nothing but modulus of elasticity which is a fourth rank tensor. And by symmetry sigma i j is equal to sigma j i when j is not equal to i similarly epsilon i j is equal to epsilon j i when j is not equal to i. And this is essential to provide to avoid the instabilities in the system, otherwise, the system will become unstable. And so, now let us move on to the next uh, topic of uh, this particular uh, course. So, we first define what we call as normal stress. So, normal stress is basically the stress which arises from a force. So, arising from a force that is perpendicular to an area okay. and this could be either tensile or compressive in nature. So, we represent these normal stresses as <laughs> sigma x x. So, basically sigma x x would be tensile stress along let us say plus x direction and it can be written as sigma x x is equal to f x divided by a x. So, here f x could be the force uh, axis or direction and this is the area of a plane perpendicular to x. Okay. So, so, for example, if you want to draw it in a cube, so let us say this is x, this is y, this is z, then this would be sigma x x which is basically perpendicular to this face here. Okay. So, this is the area a x and this is the direction of 
f x basically you can say f x which gives rise to sigma x x. So, basically when the subscripts are unmixed then we look at what we call as is as normal stress. Okay. Similarly, you will have uh, notions for sigma y y and sigma z z see these are all normal stresses explained in a similar manner. Next thing that you need to know is what we call as uh, shear stress. The shear stress is basically re resulting from forces uh, from forces uh, which is parallel to an area. So, shear stresses are generally uh, de depicted as let us say sigma x y. So, sigma x y means that force is along y direction and which acts on a plane that is normal to x. normal to x. So, generally these will be mixed. So, not generally always these will be mixed subscripts. So, this is what it is. So, if it is a sigma i j you say that force along j and the area on a that acts on a plane which is sorry acts on a plane that is perpendicular to i okay so which is so essentially what it would mean is that if you draw now a and these. So, let us say for the front face we have here sigma x x and sigma x y. So, this is on the front plane acting along the y direction on a plane that is perpendicular to x and then we will have sigma uh, x z. Okay. Similarly, on this plane we can have sigma y y and then we can have these shear stress components. We can have sigma y z and sigma y x. And for this we will have sigma sorry this is z not y sigma z z so this should be sigma z x by symmetries as i said sigma x y will be equal to sigma y x and sigma z x will be equal to sigma x z and sigma y z will be equal to sigma z y. So, this will reduce the total number of components to 6 and this sigma x y is often referred as tau x y. So, this is shear stress tau x y. So, when you now want to write the tensor, so the tensor is sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma x z, sigma y x y y sigma y z sigma x z sorry z x okay. 
you will also see instead of x, 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 y and z people use 1, 2, 3 that is also perfectly legitimate. So, this becomes sigma x. So, often you will see sigma x x, sigma y y and sigma z z which are normal stresses are referred as sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. So, this is a convention. Okay. So, this could be sigma x, this could be tau x y, this could be tau x z and then we have tau y x which is nothing but tau x y, then we have sigma y and then we have um, tau y z, then we have tau x z, then we have tau y z and then we have sigma z. So, you can see the diagonal components are these are normal stresses and the off diagonal components which are these and these. So, these are these are we can say shear stresses. Okay. So, and the tensor is symmetric about the diagonal. So, basically we can say the tensor is symmetric about the diagonal and that is that we can see because this is corresponding to this, this corresponds to this and this corresponds to that. So, these two are related to connected to each other, similar to each other. Since they are similar to each other, these are all off diagonal components which are shear stresses which are symmetric. So, this is just the definition of what is the stress and strain in the vectorial notation and how do you write shear and normal stresses. Now, often what you will see is that often in mechanics or mechanical behavior of materials, you might want to do what we call as transformation of axis. So, which means you are given stress or strain along a certain direction and you need to and this is necessary because as when we apply when we deform the metals uh, we apply load along certain direction, but the stress components are different in different direction and this is where we need to calculate the stresses in different directions from the uh, from the one which is available. So, for this let us draw a diagram here. So, let us say we have a right. So, let us say this is x and this is y for the sake of convenience and let us say then there is a there is an area which is like this. Let us say this is an area a y prime. Okay. So, we have a normal load which is so this is f y and this f y acts on a y okay. and then we transform to another coordinate system let us say for which I have a. So, this is y prime which is normal to this plane a y prime and this y prime is uh, has another direction which is so let us say this is x prime and so let us say in this case these are both orthogonal axis 
and the y prime is oriented with respect to x y previous axis in such a manner so that the angle here is theta. So, this angle here between y so y and y prime is equal to theta ok. So, this is the angle between the y and y prime. So, what we want to do is that so so, we want to so what is our objective? The objective is to calculate the stress. So, estimate the stress on a plane whose normal y prime is at theta angle to y ok. So, so the normal we know that original stress is f force is f y and the area is a y. So, let us say we calculate what is the normal force to this new plane. So, that is let us say f y prime. So, this f y prime by geometry you can say it is equal to f y into cos theta and now we calculate what is area normal to y prime and this area normal to y prime is written as a y prime which is a y in this case it is now become. So, this is this is the, the, the area of this face is a this is a y. So, it becomes a y divided by cos theta by geometry. So, basically you can say that sigma y prime or you can say sigma y prime sigma y prime y prime to be precise is equal to f y prime divided by a y prime which is equal to you can see now it becomes f y divided by a y into cos square theta. So, essentially this sigma y prime is equal to sigma y sigma y was equal to f y divided by a y. So, this becomes sigma y into cos square theta. So, this is the first relation that we have worked out by transforming the axis. Now, similarly if you want to calculate the shear stress the shear stress and the shear stress we can write as tau in this case it becomes y prime x prime ok. So, basically the force is acting along x prime on a plane whose normal is perpendicular to y prime ok. So, you, this is nothing but sigma y prime x prime this is equal to basically you can say f x prime divided by a y prime and this is equal to you can say this is equal to f x prime we have this will become f y divided by sin theta and this will become a y divided by cos theta and in this case it becomes uh, essentially f y divided by a y into sorry not divided by sin theta into sin theta into cos theta. So, this is sigma y into sin theta cos theta. So, we can see that when you transform the axis and in, in so when you transform the axis what you are going to obtain is so let us say you want to write a general expression of sigma i prime j prime. So, this will come to be let us say I do not know some sigma i into either sin square theta or cos square theta or you will have a product of these two sin theta into cos theta. You will have one of these terms uh, coming in the uh, multiplication factor and this 
can vary. So, question now is how do we evolve a general framework? Because for each of these, uh, when it gets to three dimensions, it gets even more complicated. So, the question is do we want to do in this manual way or do we want to evolve a general framework to calculate them easily? And we will see how do we do that. Now, let us look at some of the things related to sign convention. So, sign convention we follow sigma i j is equal to f i divided by a j. So, sigma i j will be positive if i and j are both positive or both negative. Sorry. Okay. So, so, essentially what it means is that let us say we calculate sigma x x. So, if force is acting along plus x direction and the area is also along plus x. So, these both will become plus and it will remain positive. Vice versa if it was minus f y minus f x this was along the negative direction as well then again it remains positive. So, so, this is what it be. So, as long as i and j signs are unmixed, this remains positive and sigma i j will become negative if signs are mixed. Okay. So, for principal stresses i will equal to I will be equal to j. So, it will be nothing but so basically in this case what i was equal to j. So, you are only worried about the sign. So, let us say we draw a picture here. So, in this case let us say so this will be positive x, this will be negative x, this will be positive y, this will be negative y. So, let us now draw the stresses. Okay. So, if the principal stress or the normal stress acts in this direction which is sigma x x. So, sigma x x whether you take this direction or this direction. So, if you take this direction this is positive because the forces along positive x direction as well as the uh, the area is along also the positive x direction. In this case the force is along minus x direction and the area is also along minus x direction. So, as a result sigma x x ends up being positive. So, sigma x x is greater than 0 because both f x and a x are. So, this is nothing but sigma x x will be equal to f x divided by a x. So, both are either positive or negative. Okay. So, on the right they are positive, on the left they are negative. If you look at the shear stress on the other hand, so shear stress is tau y x. Okay. This ends up being equal less than 0 because if you look at the top one the stress acts along the minus x axis, but the area is along the plus y axis as a result there is a unevenness. So, tau y x and tau uh, sorry tau y x is, is basically negative uh, 0 because two cases in the first case the force is along minus x and an area is along plus y. In the other case the force is along plus x and the area is along uh, negative 1. As a result there is a mismatch and uh, we say that uh, tau x tau i j is equal to tau j i and this is essential basically because of uh, the need to balance the the 
the moments because moment sigma m has to be equal to 0 otherwise the body will become unstable and it will go in sort of a perpetual rotation or acceleration. Now let us look at another topic the next which is the important one is the transformation of axis in a general sense. Right. So, now this is required let us say you, you have a stress axis which is normal stress axis as x, y, z. Okay. So, suppose you have a bar like this, you apply the forces F. However, the deformation does not always happen, does not happen perpendicular direction of force deformation happens on entities called as as we will explain later on different planes right so we have miller indices so we want to calculate what are the stresses which are principal stresses with respect to these planes so you could have one set of planes you could have another set of planes right depending upon whether the sample is crystal, single crystal or polycrystal you may require to calculate the stresses principal stresses for different planes and directions similarly when it comes to tensile and torsion tests you may have different tensile and uh, uh, shear stresses and you need to evaluate them for different directions. So, basically you need to do transformation and access to allow the change of axis. So, from let us say in this case we go from, so let us maintain the orthogonal system y prime and then z prime. So, essentially what you have done is you have taken the x y x y z system and rotated it by certain angle with respect to x or y or z and then you have a different different system different axis system altogether at a certain angle. So, basically it allows you to change the axis and hence and hence allows one to determine stresses and strains along the new axis or new system. So, this is what we are going to do and this is very important for uh, mechanical deformation because deformation is an isotropic phenomena because of crystallinity of material. Um, it could be also related to things like tension or torsion, calculating different stresses and so on and so forth. So, we will get back to this in detail in the next lecture. So, what basically we have done in this, this lecture is we have defined what the normal and shear stresses are, uh, how do we transform the stresses in the different axis and what is the sign convention. In the next lecture, we will produce a general framework for transforming the uh, axis and then calculating the stresses and strain along those new transformed axis. Thank you.